Ladies and gentlemen, in this country today, more people are investing in the stock market than ever before. I imagine some of you folks own stock in one company or another, but for those of you who don't, I better explain a couple of things. This building is owned by a very rich company called International Projects Limited. This young lady is a typical stockholder on her way to attend the annual stockholders meeting. If the stockholders cannot attend in person, they can mail in their proxies designating the management or some other person to vote for them. It is to the small stockholders, the backbone of American industry, that this story is dedicated. In a moment, you'll see how a typical stockholders meeting operates. The officers of the company are now entering the meeting room. They are Alfred Medcalf, vice president. I wouldn't trust him with a quarter. Clifford Snell, vice president and treasurer. Him, I wouldn't trust with a dime. This gentleman is the new head of the company, John T. Blessington. President and chairman of the board, him not a nickel. Warren Gilly, vice president and secretary. This crook, even the other three don't trust. And Edward L. McKeever, founder of International Projects. He's a very honest man. In fact, he's so honest, he doesn't even have to stop. And now the meeting is about to begin. Order, please, order. The meeting will come to order. The annual meeting of the stockholders is hereby declared in session. Friends, my first duty as your new chairman is a sad one. I must bid goodbye to our former president and chairman, Edward L. McKeever. As you know, the president of the United States has asked him to come to Washington, where his brilliant talents will be employed by the Department of Defense. In his 19 years as head of this company, he has seen it grow until it now manufactures everything from pins to automobiles, from a nail file to tractors and locomotives. Edward L. McKeever. Ed. Hmm? We of International Projects family have a little gift for you as a token of our appreciation. It's this gold master key which opens every door in the International Projects building. A symbol of the fact that you are always welcome to return. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's we who should thank you. The next order of business is the reading of the minutes of the last meeting. Mr. Chairman, I move to dispense with the reading of the minutes. I second. All in favor? I have proxies here representing 1,400,000 shares of stock. Speaking for these stockholders, I say aye. Any opposed? We will dispense with the reading of the minutes. And now the report of the man you're really waiting to hear from. Your treasurer, Mr. Clifford Snell. Thank you, Jack. Well, folks, I guess I'm the fellow you either like or dislike, depending upon the size of your dividend checks, hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what we did last year. You've all been given copies of our annual report. I suppose we all sort of thumb through it together, hmm? Oh, now here's page 11, for example. Assets. Ten billion one hundred and one million seven hundred and ninety two thousand eight hundred and ninety one dollars and seventy two cents. Now I think that's pretty good, don't you? Let's take a look at page thirty two. That's a good page. Inventory runs through right to page fifty. Then we have gross profits, net gains, salaries, interest charges, dividend payments, accrued income, fixed income, amortization, and page one hundred and seventy two, three, four, five. All the way through to page 190, miscellany. Well, folks, that's the story. Thank you, Mr. Snell, for your intelligent analysis. Now, will anyone move for the adoption of Mr. Snell's report? So moved. I second. It has been moved and seconded that the report of the treasurer be adopted. If there are any questions, now is the time to bring them up. Well, I see there are no questions, so we will vote. All in favor? Proxies, vote aye. Any opposed? The motion is... Yes, madam. Oh. My name isn't Madam, it's Miss. Miss Laura Partridge. Uh, Miss Partridge, do you have a question? Yes, I do. It says here that the salary for the chairman of the board will be $175,000 next year. Yes. Well, what is your question? My question is why? <laughs> now, Mr. Snell, as treasurer, would you like to answer that one? Yes, indeed. 
Happy to oblige. Could I hear the question again, please? Well, I don't want anybody to think I'm nosy, but is it true that he's going to make $175,000 next year? I mean, it just seems like such a lot of money. Oh, I see. In a company of this size, that is not considered a large salary. Not a large salary at all. I believe that answers the question. It certainly does. Now, there is a motion. I to be a pest, but what does the chairman of the board do? I beg your pardon. What do you do? <laughs> well, as a chairman I, of the board, I preside over the board. Oh, I see. Thank you very much. I'm glad you're satisfied. We're always happy to help. How often do you do it? I beg your pardon? How often do you preside over the board? Oh, well, um... About four times a year, isn't it, Gilly? Yes, four times a year, plus the annual stockholders' meeting. That's about ten hours' work. <laughs> Boy, talk about being overpaid. <laughs> One question, Miss Partridge. Are you a stockholder? I certainly am. I own ten shares outright. Certificate number 18973635. I was just asking, Miss Partridge, just asking. What about you? Me? It says here that you're going to earn, wow, $100,000. Wow! <laughs> you don't believe that I'm worth $100,000? Not if we can get somebody for less. <laughs> well, I hardly think that is a matter Doesn't for... Doesn't anybody make a motion? Yes. Oh, good. Well, I'd move that the salaries are too big. Well, it's not quite the proper form for a motion, Miss Partridge. However, if someone seconds it, do I hear a second to Miss Partridge's motion? I second it. You cannot second your own motion. Why not? I'm for it. <laughs> it's a matter of parliamentary law. Well, I don't know what they do in Parliament. I just think the salaries are too big. I don't think that you quite understand. I'd like to say something. Now, it's true that I've resigned from the company. I've sold all my stock. I know. I read about that in the paper. But for a very good reason. Sure, the Senate made you. I sold my stock because I wanted no hint of favoritism connected with my work in Washington. Now, what I'd like you to know, ladies and gentlemen, is that I have been associated with these gentlemen for many, many years, and I can assure you they are worth every cent they are getting. And if I may, I'd like to move a vote of confidence oh, in their no. behalf. Oh, no, you're out of order. I move that this move can't be moved. Why not? Because you're not a stockholder, so you're unparliamentary. If you don't mind, I would like to get... Anyway, you're going to Washington. You're not going to be worrying about the company. No matter where I may be, Miss Partridge, international projects will always mean a great deal to me. Then why didn't you pay attention to the meeting? I watched you. You didn't pay any attention to anything but that sandwich you were eating. You were gulping it down like an express train. Partridge, you're out of order. Well, if he keeps eating like that, he'll be out of order. <laughs> Jack, Jack, Miss Partridge, we still have a lot of business to take care of. Oh, I haven't finished about the salaries yet. I don't think the directors should make so much money unless they happen to be movie directors, like Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> And I think maybe we all ought to get together and form a kind of stockholders committee or something to look at. I would like to say at this time that I have never had anything like this. You have ten shares of stock. I have this. This meeting is adjourned. Ladies and gentlemen, this was not exactly a typical stockholders meeting. Well, honest Ed McKeever was off to Washington, completely unaware that his trusted associates were. Did I tell you they were crooks? I'd like to repeat it. Boy, are they crooks. Don't Boy. worry about a thing, Ed. I'll take and care Jack, of it. Jack, take my advice. Ralph Higgs is the ideal man for that vacancy on the board. Shrewd oh, operator. Mm -hmm. I intend to speak to him. Anything any of you can't figure out, you know where to find me. Oh, we'll call you. Yeah, Don't we'll worry call about you. a thing. Well, <laughs> goodbye. 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 Have a good we'll trip. Have a good trip. Bye bye. Bye bye. Goodbye. <laughs> I'll meet you.
meet you at the car. you with your hat on. Yes. Laura Partridge from the meeting, remember? Vividly. It was a wonderful meeting, wasn't it? Oh, yes. Wonderful. Miss. Oh, I hope you understand. I didn't mean anything personal about you and the sandwich. I just thought it would be bad for you. Thanks. Yes, sir. Something you want? Bicarbonate of the soda. <laughs> Boy, I bet the government's paying you a terrific salary to get you to leave international projects. As a matter of fact, I'm working for a dollar a year. It's quite a cut, isn't it? You know, this was my first stockholders' meeting. I didn't know it could be so exciting. They usually aren't. What? What was different about this one? You. What did I do? I only asked a few questions. After all, I think more people ought to take an interest. Oh, no, no, please That's don't. That's perfectly I... all right. Oh, no, I don't want you to pay. Look, me. don't mention it. Thank you. You're welcome. Tell me, do you own stock in any other companies, or does International Projects have you all to itself? Oh, no, I only own International Projects. My landlady thought I ought to sell the stock and buy government bonds. But I did a little investigating, and I found out... So I did a little investigating, and I found out that International Projects refrigerators cost $80 more than any other refrigerator. So I figured that any company that overcharged like that must be making lots of money. Miss Partridge, you're remarkable. <laughs> I've enjoyed meeting you. Me too. Goodbye. Bye. I drop you off, only I'm on my way to the airport. Oh, that's all right. I'll be fine. Good, good. Oh, which way are you going? Which way are we going? 59th Street Bridge, sir. 59th Street Bridge. If you took the Triborough Bridge, you'd go right past my house. Oh, but the Triborough costs a quarter. It does? Well, I think we can swing that. Hop in, Miss Partridge. Thank you. Uh, just tell George where you want him to stop. 549 East 86th Street, please. Very good, miss. This is very nice of you. Oh, it's nothing. Uh, Williams, I want to add a few things to that memo Especially to the department since heads. I was such a nuisance at the meeting. That's your prerogative, Miss Partridge. You're a stockholder. I sure am. How did you happen to buy International Project? Oh, I didn't buy it. I was given it in a will. You see, this man, Mr. Toby, he used to live next door to me, and when he was sick, I used to play checkers with him, and sometimes I'd make him a little soup or something. And then, when he died, he, he left me Mirabelle, his cat, and these shares in International Projects. Well, that was very nice of it. You were about to add to that uh, memo, Yes, sir. I want to get immediate estimates on base installation equipments from Jones Thompson, Williamson, Transcontinental Corp. And oh, you I might work check... for them. Uh, whom? Transcontinental. I demonstrated a stove on television. Try this Transcontinental gas range. The ever-loving oven. Oh, uh, you're an actress. <laughs> well, if you want to call it acting. No, but I am an actress. Oh, but not just television. The stage is my field. Oh, really? Are you in anything now? Well, at the moment, I'm in menswear at Bloomingdale's. But just part-time. Show business is a little slow, anyway, for me. You know, I'm a very unusual type. Yes. Well, aren't there a lot of little theaters off-Broadway, you know, groups? And... Oh, sure. I used to belong to one last year, the Young Shakespeareans. You know what they did? Nothing but Shakespeare. Do you like Shakespeare? Well, I, I've read a lot of it. Yeah, well, take my advice. Don't play it. Oh, it's so tiring. They never let you sit down unless you're a king. So then, after that, I played summer stock in Provincetown, Massachusetts. Yeah. Whole company lived in one house. We ate nothing but fish. <laughs> but I played some small parts, painted scenery, cleaned fish. But I did get to meet Josh Logan. And I went up to him one day, and I said, Mr. Logan, I'd like to be in something of yours. And he said, well, here's my house. 
he said that? No, I said it. This is where I live. Oh. Thanks very much for the... Excuse me. <laughs> Thanks very much for the ride. It was a pleasure talking to you, and good luck in your career. Thank you. Oh, and good luck in Washington. Hello, Miss Partridge. Hello, Mrs. Ryan. That's my landlady. Boy, is she going to be impressed with this car. Yes, well, it was a real pleasure, Miss Partridge. Oh, it was a real pleasure for me, too. Well, goodbye. Bye. Oh, and uh, don't worry about the company. I'm going to attend every single meeting. I'm going to look after things. I'm sure the board of directors will be most appreciative. I hope so. Bye. Where were you, Miss Partridge, to a funeral? You know, in a way, I'm almost sorry to be going to Washington. I think I'm going to miss all the fun. <laughs> Well, McKeever was right. He did miss a lot of fun. Certainly, Laura Partridge had fun attending all the meetings. But the directors were not amused. Those boys were a bad audience. Miss Partridge, you're out of order. Miss Partridge, you're out of order. Miss Partridge, you're out of order. If that girl comes to one more meeting, I tell you, Jack, we've got to do something about this woman. Don't worry, Clifford. Don't worry. She's interfering with every plan we've made. Did you hear her when I announced we were voting ourselves bonuses? She practically called us crooks. You know, Jack, I wouldn't put it past her to go ahead and form that stockholders committee. Oh, dear. Don't mention that. She keeps threatening to. And at a time like this. Boys, I'm aware of the situation, and I have it well in hand. Any minute now, our problems will be solved. I'd like to see Mr. Blessington. Mr. Blessington? Who shall I see is calling? You shall say Laura Partridge. If you have a solution, I think you should let us all in on it. After all, this calls for drastic... Yeah? Mr. Blessington, Miss Laura Partridge is here. She's here? Send her right in. Yes, sir. Send her in? What's she here for? I sent for her. You, you, you're out of your mind. Miss Partridge doesn't know it yet, but I'm going to hire her. You're a what? Boys, there's one rule in business. If you can't crush them, join them. If you can't kill them, acquire them. Now, we can't kill Miss Partridge. How do we know until we've tried? Now, look, boys. We won't have to keep her forever just until the quarterly meeting is over. Now, you don't want her around asking questions when we bring up that stock option deal, do you? Miss Partridge? Miss Partridge, how nice of you to come. Gentlemen, you all know Miss Partridge? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How do you do? Mr. Blessington, on your call to Mr. McKeever, I haven't been able to reach him. Oh, keep trying. It's important. Are you going to speak to Mr. McKeever? How is he? I don't know. We haven't heard from him. He must be very busy. Yes, very busy indeed. Passing out defense contracts to all our competitors. Everybody's getting business from him but us. Well, we're here to talk about you, Miss Partridge. I imagine you were surprised to... Yeah. There must be something I can do. I've been in there for... What? Well, I'm sorry, I didn't know you were busy. Oh, it's all right, Harry. Uh, Miss Partridge, may I present Mr. Harry Harkness, a new member of our board of directors? Harry, this is Miss Partridge. Oh, so nice to know you. How do you do? Don't stockholders elect new directors? Oh, we intend to present Mr. Harkness for approval at the next meeting. Oh, good. Not that I don't think you're qualified, but... What, what are your qualifications? I mean, you understand, that's nothing personal. It's just that I don't think we should hire a pig and a poke. Miss Partridge, we will discuss Mr. Harkness's qualifications at the meeting. Now, Jack, I'd be very happy to tell Miss Partridge my qualifications. Well, for three years running, I've taken second place in the Bermuda Yacht Race. Uh, Harry. I'm on the board of the New York Polo Association. Took best of breed at the Westminster. Harry. Well, if there's anything else you'd like to know about me, just ask my brother-in-law. Who's your brother-in-law? Why, Jack Blessington. Oh. Oh! Now, we're wasting a lot of time and getting away from the real business of this particular meeting. Have a chair, Harry. 
Miss Partridge, I'll come right to the point. Uh, Miss Partridge. Uh, Miss Partridge, at the stockholders' meetings, you've been showing a lot of intelligent interest in the operations of our company. As a matter of fact, we're so delighted with your grasp of the company's problems that we'd like you to be more closely associated with us. How would you like to come and work here? Me? <laughs> what kind of work would I do? Well, it, it, it would be sort of um, general work. Nothing really specific, but you would be in charge of it. That sounds very interesting. Yeah, and, and you could also help a lot in getting goodwill for the company from other small stockholders like yourself. Oh, I'd like that. Oh, I never worked in an office before. I can only type with one finger. Oh, you'd have a secretary. A secretary? Oh, well, if you really want me. But we're very anxious to have you, aren't we, gentlemen? Yes. Um, what salary would you pay for this job? Uh, Clifford, that's your department. Well, uh, shall we say 75 a week? Oh, Clifford, I think we could do a little better. Suppose we say 100. Do you think that's too much? No, I guess it's not too much. Well, that's not too much. Then I'd like 125. 125 it is. And you can start tomorrow, Miss Partridge. It'll be a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. Welcome to the firm, Miss Partridge. Thank you. Same here. Thank you. Miss Partridge, glad to have you aboard. Aye, aye, sir. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye Miss Partridge. Goodbye, Miss Partridge. And so, just like Cinderella, Laura went to the party. Oh, I know, to you folks, it's just another job in an office. But believe me, she's going to have a ball. Shot Graven, I want to emphasize one thing. Even though Miss Partridge is to be employed by this company, we want her activity to be very, very slight. It will be your duty as her secretary to see to it that she does little or nothing. Even that may be too much. I understand, Mr. Snell. If you see or hear anything unusual, I want you to be sure to, to report it to me. Here we are, Miss Partridge. This is your office. Good morning, Miss Partridge. Good morning. And this is your secretary, Miss Amelia Shotgraven. Hi. How do you do, Miss Partridge? Well, how do you like it? Oh, it's very nice. Of course, I couldn't expect anything as big as your office, not right away. <laughs> no, not right away. <laughs> hey. I never got billing before. <laughs> well. Let me help you. Oh, hey, I'll take your coat. Well. Here I am. <laughs> you certainly are. Yes, indeed. <laughs> now make yourself right at home. Oh, I will. I like coffee. <laughs> well, we better plug it in. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, there's a plug under the desk on the floor, Miss Oh, Parker. good. I figure if I have the coffee right here, then I don't have to be running out all the time. I can... Just concentrate on business. <laughs> Sugar. All right. Oh, I take it black. Well, now I'm ready to start work. Good. Good. Well, good luck, Miss Partridge. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, wait a minute. What am I supposed to do? Oh, yes, yes, I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. We've decided to make you director of stockholder relations. What's that? Well, um, uh, those small stockholders we talked about, like yourself, it will be your job to keep them happy, make friends for the company. Will they be coming in here? No, oh, no, 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 no. But uh, occasionally they write letters, and when they do, the letters will be turned over to you to answer. Oh, that'll be fun. We thought you'd be pleased. Well, good luck, Miss Partridge. We're so happy to have you with us. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Come again. <laughs> Well, to work, to work, to work. Where are the letters from the stockholders? Hey! I always wanted one of these merry-go-round chairs. Whee! What's that? Oh, your dictaphone. Whenever I'm doing something else instead of dictating to me personally, you use that, then I transcribe it later. How do I do it? Well, you turn this. 
press this. Now say something. What'll I say? Anything. Oh, all right. <clears throat> Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Come in. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, then where's the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? Miss Partridge, Mr. Jenkins. How do you do? How do you do? Mr. Jenkins is our office manager. Hi. I hope you're comfortable. <clears throat> oh, very, very comfortable. I, uh, I have some things for you. This is the key to, uh, this is the, your employee's identification card. Thank you. Your group insurance card. Thank you. Your membership in the dining room. Your membership in the welfare club. Your withholding tax form. Your social security form. And your, uh, uh key to the, be the, di the, the washroom. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm sure you'll have no trouble as long as Amelia's taking care of you. Oh, I know. Amelia's the most efficient girl we have here. Well, thank you, Mr. Jenkins. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Amelia. Good morning, Mr. Jenkins. You like him, don't you? I beg your pardon? You like him. Oh. Uh, shall we begin? Oh, okay. Where are the letters from the stockholders? There are no letters. Oh, well, Mr. Buzzard, he, he said... He said if any should come in, you would get them. Oh, well, what am I supposed to do, just wait? Well, um, perhaps there's some other letters you'd like to dictate. Well... Can I ask you a question? Of course. Do you always wear your hair that way? Yes, I do. Oh, well, it's easy to fix. Mr. Jenkins seems like a nice man. How long have you known him? I don't understand why you're so interested in Mr. Jenkins, Miss Partridge. Oh, I'm not interested in him. You are. Oh, I think you're stuck on him. Why did you tell him? Oh, if he knew you liked him, he'd fall apart like a soggy donut. Miss Partridge, I I'd prefer to keep our relationship on a business level. I'm here purely as your secretary. Oh. Um. I'm sorry. Now, who can I write a letter? Oh, I know. <clears throat> Dear Jimmy. Uh, to whom is this going? To Jimmy. May I have his full name and address, please? Oh, that's his only name. I don't know his other name. I don't know his address. Well, then how will this reach him? Uh, through the milk bottle. Uh, Dear Jimmy, I would like you to leave two quarts of grade A milk tomorrow and a quarter of a pound of butter, as I am no longer just working off and on but have accepted a position as an executive. Thank you. Signed, Laura Partridge. <laughs> yeah? Mr. McKeever is coming on. <laughs> They've finally gotten hold of him. About time. <clears throat> Hello, Ed? Ed? He's coming on now. Be nice to him. Nice? Nothing. Give him the facts. <laughs> oh, don't you worry. I will. <laughs> Hello, that you, Ed? Yeah, this is me. Oh, gosh, it's nice to hear your voice again. <laughs> oh, we're just sitting around in your old office. Cliff, Al, Warren, Harry. Harry Harkness. Uh, what do you want with that idiot? Fine, Ed, fine. I'll tell him you said hello. Jack, I haven't got time to play games. I'll, I'll be up in New York in a week or so for some hearings. We can talk then, unless it's something that can't wait. Now, look, Ed, I want to talk to you now. Uh, say, that was quite a picture of you on the cover of Newsweek. Very impressive, oh, I For know. heaven's sake, let uh, me talk to him. <clears throat> Hello, McKeever, this is Cliff Snell. We can't understand why we haven't been awarded any new government contracts this year. Now, naturally, we don't want you to be obvious in favoring your old firm, but... Have you ever heard of the United States Senate? Well, why should we be penalized because you go to Washington? It should be the other way around. And if you... Hello? Hello? He hung up. He wouldn't even listen. Mm, old Ed can be pretty stubborn. I think it's disgraceful how little he cares for this company. Disgraceful. It's the truth. We're the only ones that have any loyalty or integrity. <sighs> Let's go to lunch. Wait a minute, chaps. All right, let's go.
proved to be a fine employee. Every morning she arrived bright and early, her pencil sharp and her paper out, her secretary on tap. Then she'd sit there for eight hours trying to think of something to do. Dear Mother, well, Mother, I still like my job, comma, but up to now I really haven't had very much to do. However, I do have a plan that should keep me a lot busier from now on. Hello, Amelia. Hey, you look wonderful. What's the matter? Mr. Jenkins. I ran into him in the hallway. He asked me to go to lunch. Did he really? I wonder why he suddenly... Oh, well, you know, these things sometimes just happen like that. Huh. Amelia, how can I get hold of some of the names of the stockholders? Oh, well, we have a, a stockholders list. Oh, good. Would you get it for me, please? Oh, oh I'm, I'm really not... Oh, supposed come to... on, Amelia. We changed your hair. We can change a lot of things around here. All right. Maine, Maryland, New York, Rhode Island, Texas... Texas. We ought to get somebody from Texas. That's a big state. The people there must be very lonely. Miss Partridge, I don't Mrs. understand. Mrs. Emily you... Woodbury. That's a nice, friendly-sounding name. Twenty-five shares. That's good. Amelia, take a letter. To a stockholder? Well, why not? I'm tired of waiting for stockholders to write to me. Why can't I write to them for a change? Well, I Anyway, don't... Mr. Blessington said to make friends for the company. Well, it's sort of irregular. But if you say so, Miss Partridge... Okay. Dear Mrs. Woodbury, my name is Laura Partridge, and I am a woman just like you are, except that from your name being Mrs., you are probably married. I am not married as yet because of my job as a career woman. I work here at International Projects... That's what I call advertising. I'm glad you like it, Mr. Blessington. Real sound advertising. Say, Jack, I want to talk to you. What's this? Part of our new advertising campaign. Oh, do, do we make bathing suits? It's not for bathing suits. It's for uh, Miss Larry, uh, tell Mr. Harkness the slogan. I had my swimming pool dug by an international project steam shovel. It's a darling shovel. See, it's an ad for our steam shovels. Then why don't you show a steam shovel? Because nobody would want to look at a steam shovel. Uh, thank you, Miss Larrio. Uh, let's see the next one. Jack, I want to tell you something. I think you'll be pleased by it. We've been having trouble with a little outfit called the Apex Clock Company. It seems that they've... Oh, not now, Harry. We'll talk about that later. Very good. What's the slogan for this one? My train is pulled by an international project's diesel engine. That's why I'm such a happy engineer. Excellent. Jack, did you know... I, uh, I hear McKeever's in town. That's right, he's going to drop in on us. Thank you. Uh, let's see the next one. Look, we're going to have to put it to McKeever this time. Do you know what our corporate earnings are going to look like this year? We've just got to get some government contracts. Oh, Ed will come through for us. I've known him for 20 years. I'm glad you have confidence in him. No. Oh. What are we going to do about Laura Partridge? Oh, we've taken care of Miss Partridge. Oh, we've taken care of Miss Partridge. Do you know that she cost us $300 last week in postage? $300 a week? She's writing letters to all the stockholders, hundreds of them. I didn't tell her to write to the stockholders. I said if any letters came in... She's not waiting for them to come in. Well, have you read the letters? What's in them? I've seen some of them. Things like, how are you? How's your family? Do you have any suggestions? Stuff like that. It sounds harmless enough. Harmless? We don't want suggestions from the stockholders. I'm afraid of all these letters. It's not safe. Well, what can we do about it? We can't fire her. Well, we can take her secretary away from her. We can do that. Let her try writing 600 letters a day by hand and see how she likes it. Where did she get the stockholders list? I don't know. I'm going to find out, though. 
This is Mr. Snell. Tell Miss Shotgraven to come to my office immediately. I'll meet her there. What's she supposed to be? Tell him the slogan, Miss Larry, huh? I am a typical international project stockholder. Typical stockholder. I wish she were. Laura Partridge. You let me know when McKeever gets here. Oh, thank you, Miss Larry. That'll be all for now. Well, oh, Jack, I was telling you something. Jack? Uh, yes, sir? What you said last week about getting rid of competition really impressed me. Oh, thank you, Harry. Well, I found out we were taking a trimming from a little clock manufacturer up in New England. Apex Electric Clock Company, Pittsfield, Massachusetts. What about Apex? Well, I felt they were hurting our Western Clock Company, so I forced them out. I undersold them by 50%, and I kept on doing it until they cried uncle. And yesterday, they went into bankruptcy. Apex clock. You forced them into bankruptcy. Right. Harry. Harry, promise me. Promise me you won't say a word about this to anyone until we've straightened it out. Well, why? I'm kind of proud of it. Harry, you idiot. If this gets out, it'll ruin us. Apex clock is one of our own companies. It belongs to us. <laughs> The outbasket, distribution A. Ophelia, ready for lunch? No, Mark, I have to go to Mr. Snell's office first. He sent for me. I don't know what he... I, I've been dying to talk to you, Amelia. She wants to meet you tonight. She wants me to bring you over for dinner. My mother. Your mother? Oh, What's my happened to this put around here? Oh. Mr. McKeever. Hello, how are you, Mark? Good to see you, Mr. McKeever. You look well. You look like you're doing pretty well yourself. <laughs> Oh, excuse me, I have to see Blessing. <laughs> Let me show you uh, where... I know, it's my old office, remember? Yeah. Oh, Amelia, would you please type this for me before you go to lunch? Oh, Laura, I have to see Mr. Snell. Oh, what do you want to see him for? Well, I don't know, he just said... Miss Partridge. It's you. Yes, it's me, but you. Oh, it's me, too. Oh, Mr. McKeever, I'm so glad... Come here, I've got to show you something. Never mind, Amelia. I'll see you later. See you here at six. Look. Well, Wait till you to see the inside. Very nice. Gee, this is a happy surprise. I thought you were in Washington. Well, I just came up for some government hearings, and I promised the boys I'd drop in on them. Sit down. Well, I only have a second. Oh, sit down anyway. All right. Uh, I don't understand this. I mean, what do you do? I am director of stockholder relations. Director of? That's right. I write letters to the little stockholders telling them about the company, and they write me back. Well, that's quite an idea. But who, well, who hired you, and, and what happened to your acting career? Well, what happened? Would you like some coffee? Uh, I'm due in Blessington's office. How about a sandwich? No, no, really. Oh, I... it's delicious. It's peanut butter and smoked salmon. I make it myself. Well, no, just some coffee, black, no sugar. All right. How did this all come about? Well, well, do you remember that first meeting I went to? I remember. Well, I enjoyed that meeting so much that I went to lots of other meetings. I'm sure. And then pretty soon, well, they just became so impressed with my intelligent grasp of the company's business and by the questions that I asked that they offered me a job. Smartest thing they could do. What do you mean by that? Oh, nothing, nothing. I, I think it's a great idea, very important. I've always felt we neglected the small stockholders. Always wanted to do something for them. You did? Certainly I did, and this personal touch is just what we needed. Oh, you know, it's fascinating work. You have no idea of the problems that come up and the questions that I have to answer. But look at this letter. Listen to this. Dear Miss Partridge, thanks for writing me. I have a problem. I have 10 shares of International Project stock, and my sister-in-law just bought 20 shares of the same stock. Would you advise me to buy some more? Yours truly, Maybell Rogers. Now, what would you answer? Well, I... Go ahead. You were once head of the company. What would you tell her? Well, I'd advise her to buy more stock because of the soundness of the corporate setup and the prospects of future earnings. It's very simple. It's all wrong. That's not right for a little lady stockholder. This is what I wrote her. 
Dear Mrs. Rogers, in answer to your question, I think you should buy 10 more shares of stock because if your sister-in-law has more stock than you, she will be impossible. <laughs> also, it's a very good investment. Yours truly, Laura Partridge. See? I uh, think I do. Well, I took care of that Shotgraven woman. Hmm? Miss Shotgraven, the stockholders list. Oh, yes, yes, good. Did you hear from Akiva yet? Not yet. He certainly should have been here by now. I can't oh. imagine what's well, happening. I'll wait. I want to be here when you talk to him. You better get the others in here, too. I wish he'd hurry. I have a very important luncheon engagement. Yes, I know. Well, even if I didn't have, I'm hungry. Mm. Smoked salmon and peanut butter, huh? Not bad. It's a little different. It's a little sticky, too. Oh, just a minute. Sorry I don't have any napkins. I left out the mayonnaise, too. You know, I never noticed it. Do you want... Do you uh, bring your own lunch every day? Hey. I'm flattered. Well, you're the first cover of Newsweek I ever met personally. And you know, most people have a picture of their wife and children on their desk, and I don't have a wife and children. Well, I... I'm certainly flattered. Really, I am. It was a wonderful article they wrote about you. It made you sound so important and busy. Well, I am busy. Only thing, it was hard for me to figure out what you were busy at. Me too. Most of my time is spent in the Senate committee rooms answering questions. What kind of questions? Well, mainly they want to know why I'm not getting things done. Well, why aren't you getting things done? Because I'm always at the Senate answering questions. Are they giving you a hard time? Well, not really. It's just that Washington's different. The minute a guy tries to throw his weight around, there are ten guys ready to stop him. You know, the big man stuff doesn't go too well down there. Actually, though, in a way, it's it's been good for me really has. You're a nice man, McKeever. A really nice man. Well, thank you, Miss Partridge. And you know, you're nice looking, too. Oh, come now. Oh, sure you are. Listen, this could be uh, a picture of an actor. It's a picture of just what I am, an ex-grease monkey who got lucky. Oh, no. Now, this could be William Holden. I think your eyes have gone back on you. It's funny, though, you saying that it could be a picture of an actor, because when I was a kid, I thought I'd give it a whirl. The theater, I mean. What happened? Oh, I don't know. All of a sudden, I was a businessman. Gee, <laughs> just like me. That's right. People used to say I was pretty good. Oh, for an amateur. I did recitations on Friday afternoons in school. It was one piece I had they used to applaud like anything when I finished. Spartacus to the Gladiators. What? Well, that's the name of the piece, Spartacus to the Gladiators, by Elijah Kellogg. Oh. You know, I still remember it. He called me chief. <sighs> it's, it's funny, things that stick in your mind. <laughs> W would you like to hear me do it? Sure. Of course, you know, if you, if you don't like it, just say so. And I'll stop. I haven't done it for years, you know. Not since I was a boy. I know. Go ahead. Go on. Spartacus to the gladiators. Ye call me chief, and ye do well to call me chief, who for twelve long years has met in the arena every shape of man and beast the broad empire of Rome could furnish, and never yet has lowered his arm. But I was not always thus, the savage chief of still more savage men. My early life ran quiet, as the brook by which I sported. And when at noon I had gathered the sheep beneath the shade and played upon my shepherd's flute, there was a friend, the son of a neighbor, who joined me in my pastime. That night the Romans landed on our coast, and I saw the bleeding body of my father 
cast upon the burning rafters of our dwelling. Today in the arena, I killed a man. When I broke his helmet clasp, behold, it was my boyhood friend. He knew me, smiled faintly, gasped and died. I told the praetor that man had been my friend. I begged the body that I might bear it away and burn it on the funeral pyre and mourn o'er it in silence. I, amid the dust of the arena, did I beg this poor boon. The praetor drew away from me as though I were pollution and sternly said, let the carrion rot. There are no noble men but Romans. What'd you think? Well... Now, good, huh? Oh, I wouldn't say that. You mean you liked it? Oh, I wouldn't say that either. Well... I wanted you to be honest. Oh, don't feel bad. After all, you're Edward L. McKeever. That's a wonderful thing to be. I wouldn't want you to be some actor named Rock McKeever or something. You know, all of a sudden, I have a feeling I want to kiss you. You do? Wow. Sorry, what an idea, wanting to kiss you in your office. Oh, it's all right. I'm on my lunch hour. I have to see the boys. in trouble, she's in trouble. Oh, no. No. No, you have it all wrong. No, you have it all wrong. All right, Amelia. What did Mr. Snell do to you? He fired me. He fired me. Now, Mark and I, well, we were going to be married. Now we can't afford it. Mark has to support his mother. Why did he fire you? Because I'm so ashamed. Oh, come on, Amelia. Put your head together. Tell me about it. Laura, I was put in here to spy on you. The only reason they hired you was to keep you from upsetting stockholders' meetings. You weren't supposed to do anything. You must have sensed that. No. I never get suspicious of people if they're nice to me. Oh, I wanted to say something, but you were so happy in your work. Smartest thing they could do. Amelia, I want to write one more letter. Take it down, please. It's a memo. What kind of a memo? It's from Laura Partridge to Mr. Clifford Snell. <clears throat> Dear Mr. Snell, make that Mr. Snell. I am resigning from your company. Oh, Laura, you don't have to resign. Take it just... down, Amelia. I am resigning from your company as of here and now. My reason for doing this is because I no longer wish to work with such mean, unethical people as you. 
kindest regards, Laura Partridge. Laura, you don't have to resign just because they fired me. This is a very rich company. You can just sit here and collect your paycheck every week. Type it up immediately. I still can't understand your attitude. Boys, that's it. I won't discuss it anymore. No one can accuse you of making any personal profit. You sold your stock. Look, let's not go over it again. I don't think it's right, and I'm not going to do it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have an appointment. Well, I don't think you're being fair, Ed. Not fair at all. I mean, here we are, working hard for the company, day and night. For heaven's sake, Jack, when are we going to lunch? Day and night, huh? I'm writing to you again so soon because the strangest thing has happened. My husband lost his job after 22 years with the same company. Everyone at the factory is saying it was international projects that forced them out of business. The strange part is that only two years ago, international projects bought it. Does international projects own something called Apex Electric Park? As a matter of fact, I thought... Well, just look a minute, it up, I'll look check. it up. Two years ago, international projects bought Apex Electric Park. Why would they do a thing like this to their own company is what I want to know. Please answer as soon as possible. It is our company, all right? Here it is in our directory. How could they do a thing like that? How could they do a thing like that? What am I saying? Of course they could do a thing like that. Boy, what I could do with this at a stockholders' meeting. Mr. Snell, where's my resignation? I put it in Mr. Snell's box. Get it back. Oh, I can't. It's locked. Break it open. Get a hatch. Oh, Laura, you're staying. Of course I'm staying. Somebody's got to keep an eye on these big geniuses. <laughs> I want to speak to Mr. Snell, please. Gone for the day. Well, it's pretty early for him to be waltzing out, isn't it? Yes, you can take a message. This is Laura Partridge. The message is, who does he think he is and where does he get off firing my secretary? And you tell him I want to see him first thing in the morning. And he better have those four other dummies with him. Whoops! <laughs> Then, gentlemen, we understand each other. Miss Shotgraven gets her job back. Miss Shotgraven gets a raise. I get all the postage I need for writing to the stockholders. And you'll never put another of our companies out of business. letter for women number eights do you think we'll need? Oh, I think about a thousand will do it. Amelia, take a letter, please. Colonel William B. Butler, 17 Ashton Street, Natchez, Mississippi. My dear Colonel, I was mighty pleased to hear from you. It's ridiculous. She has a bigger office staff than I have. $800 last week on postage. The stationary bill was just no telling what awful things she's been writing in those letters. You and your brother-in-law. No, now, Clifford, don't let's start on Harry again. You should have thrown him out on his foolish face. Now, Cliff, you know how my wife is about her darling baby brother. Well, I've been having enough trouble with her as it is. 
Why don't you try staying home nights? No, he'd rather keep Harry. I just can't do anything about Harry now. Well, you're gonna have to do something about Laura Partridge. Yes, we can't have her around here any longer, snooping and prying. Couldn't we send her someplace? Say, say, he's got something there. Maybe we could send her on a tour of the plants or something. Hello, chaps. We could send her to one of our other companies. We've got a cannery in Alaska. And has Harry decided to close it, too? Oh, let's be serious for a moment, Clifford. Now, I do think you fellows have an interesting idea. Miss Partridge might enjoy working in the field for a while. The problem is where to send her. I could use a drink. I say, I wish you fellows would drink your own stuff. My expense account is beginning to look outrageous. Yes. $1,175 last month. I checked it myself. Well, and who told you to stick your nose into my business? I'm the treasurer, remember? Yes, we all got to watch our expenses this coming quarter. If McKeever doesn't hand us some contracts, there's going to be a lot of other cutting down around here. You know, Jack, I was thinking, it seems to me that if you went down to Washington and saw him personally, that's it. You mean you'll go? Not me. We'll send Laura Partridge. What? We'll ask her to go to Washington and appeal to McKeever for some orders on behalf of the small stockholders. Oh, now, just a minute, Jack. Hey, Jack, that's good. Do you know that woman's liable to talk him into it? Yes. He was always talking about doing something for the small stockholder. Do you suppose she'll go? Why not? She's beefing about how the cut in the dividend is hurting her precious little stockholders. Here's her chance to do something for him. Yes. We'll give her an expense account, let her buy herself some clothes and things. She'll go. It's not a bad idea. I hate to admit it, Jack, but it's not a bad idea at all. Oh, thank you, Clifford. Uh, get me Miss Partridge, please. There's only one flaw on this plan of sending Miss Partridge to Washington. Ah, uh, what's that? She'll be back. Well, so we'll send her someplace else, like you suggested, Warren, on a tour of the plants as ambassador of goodwill from the Home Office. She could tour the country and our foreign branches. She's been gone for years. Oh, hello, Miss Partridge. Uh, this is Mr. Blessington. Oh, hello, Mr. Blessington. Uh, Miss Partridge, I'd like to see you this afternoon, if you don't mind. Well, uh, the board of directors have decided to entrust you with a very important and delicate mission. A mission? What kind of a mission? Well, it would be sort of uh, ambassador, like uh, Claire Booth Lewis. So Laura flew to Washington to help her company and the small stockholders and incidentally to take another crack at her Prince Charming. He was having troubles of his own at the Pentagon. Well, not all his own. The Senate was helping a little. Get me Harrington on the private line. Yes, Mr. McKeever. McKeever, Joe? Oh, General. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. General, I'll call you back. McKeever, Joe? Well, I've been expecting to hear from you. What? I can't let you know on the equipment until I hear from the Senate about the new appropriation. Well, how do I know? If I can wait, so can you. What have you got? Major General Beckley called again. Tell him it's OK. The French ambassador asked about Thursday night. Tender my regrets. And there were some personal calls. I didn't know whether you'd want to talk or not. Mr. Wilkins. No. Mr. Hanover. No, no. General Aldridge. No, no, no. Madame DuPont. No, no. Miss Laura Partridge, no. Harry Walker, and Prince Michael, Agnes Wilkinson. Oh, wait a minute, what was that name again? Agnes Wilkinson. No, no, before that. Prince Michael. No, no, no. Harry Walker. No, no. Miss Laura Partridge. That's it. When did she call? She's called three times. From New York? No, she's here in Washington. She's been trying to get an appointment with you, wouldn't state her business. I told her it'd be at least two weeks. I knew you wouldn't want to see her. What do you mean you knew I wouldn't want to see Miss Partridge? Well, why ever would you? Well, I... Well, I don't know, but see if you can find it. Never mind. McKeever! What? Now, wait a minute. I did not say the ambassador is a baboon. I simply stated that I thought the country would be better represented by a baboon. All right, so I'm tactless. Oh, yes. Yes! Yes! Williams! What is it? Senator Simpkins is here and... Send him in. You may go in, Senator. Hope I'm not disturbing you, Ed. Not at all, Senator. This little lady has been trying to see you, so I brought her over. Hello, Mr. McKeever. 
Well, your secretary kept saying you weren't here. So I remembered you told me the Senate was always dragging you over there, so I went over there, but you weren't there. So then I asked Senator Simpkins if he could help me find you, and he took me back over here, and, and it turns out here you are. <laughs> here. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're here. Thank you for bringing her over, Senator. Well, no trouble at all, Ed. I was going to drop over anyway. We may have good news for you on that appropriation very shortly. <laughs> yes, but when? Don't know yet. Now, Ed, you have to be a I, little... I know, patient. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Well, you're catching on. Uh, goodbye, Miss Partridge. Goodbye, Senator. Thank you. It was my pleasure. You know, Ed, this little lady certainly has a way with her. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, <laughs> Won't you sit down? Thank you. Nice man, the senator. But your secretary... Well, he's trying to protect me. He doesn't have to protect you against me. Well, he doesn't know that, and I'm not so sure about it myself. <laughs> I guess you're surprised to see me. I certainly am. Oh, excuse me. Makiba? No, I can't give you the NATO on NATO. The data on NADA. The data on NATO. No. These phones, I, where were we at? Oh, well, you said, no, I, I said, were you surprised to see me? And you said, you certainly am. Well, I was hoping to talk to you again because the last time I saw you, I, well, it was, it was an abrupt departure. Oh, it was abrupt. You ran like a thief. Miss Partridge, you see, I'm a businessman, and all my life I've concentrated on business. Now, this has necessarily forced me to devote more of my time to some things and less to others. You understand? Sure. You're scared of girls. Miss Partridge, I'm a very busy man. If you're here on business, state your business. Oh, well, all right. I'll state my business. The Board of Directors of International... Aha! What's aha? The Board of Directors. That explains it. They sent you down oh, here, well, didn't they? They sent you to get business with the company. Well, they sent me down. That's, but that's a nasty not... thing. A young girl comes to Washington to try and get an innocent, honest businessman to do something unethical, to entice him with her wiles. My wiles? I didn't plan to use one single solitary wile on you. And what are you all dressed up for? Oh, I'm not dressed up. It's just, just an old rag. It's brand new and expensive, too. You came here as a temptress to tempt oh, me. Oh, I did not. And that's a new perfume, too. What's the name of it? Temptation. I thought so. New hat, new shoes. Where'd they come from? All right, the company... Ah, did... the company. They outfitted you in silks and perfumes to break down my morale. They sent Delilah to call on Samson. You are here to give me a haircut. You're crazy. Well, go ahead. Go ahead what? What are you afraid of? You said yourself I'm scared of girls. You want business, so go ahead. Break down my morale. Tamper with my ethics. All right. There. I tampered with your ethics, okay? Miss Partridge, I just can't give you any business. I don't want any business. You don't want any? Oh, I do. But the way things are, I don't. Well, I don't follow you. Oh. Look, the board of directors said they sent me down here to get business. But the real reason was to get me out of the office. But the really real reason that I came down was to get you to do something. What? McKeever. I want you to come back and take over international projects again. You what? Oh, we really need you. The little stockholder's getting his... McKeever! What? Say that again. Oh, yes, Senator, you were right. Yeah, you were right. <laughs> Thank you. Ha! Ah. Williams? Williams! 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 Yes, sir. Our appropriation came through, Williams. Release all those contracts we've been holding. Now, oh, Laura, you brought me luck. I did? If you only knew what I've been going through trying to get this thing finalized. You mean it's done? Done. It calls for a celebration. It certainly does. I'll show you the town. 
I'd like to see it myself. All I've seen so far is the Senate. If your job here is finished... Let's then, get out of here, huh? Then that means there's no reason why you can't come back to the company. Laura, I don't want to talk about the company. Let's do the town. Now, what's the first thing you'd like to see? Well, I'd like to see the Senate. <laughs> See the well, Senate? Of course I want all to... those steps. Oh, come on. And so, gentlemen, this project, as I have outlined it to you here today, should prove a boon to my state and to the nation. And within 10 years, it will have begun to pay for itself at a saving to the Department of Agriculture of some $12 million a year. And now, if there are any questions. Mr. Congressman, I'd like to oh, know no, why. No, no, no. I... No. I... No. No, no. I hate to say this. Then don't say it. But I really have to catch that last plane. <laughs> stay over. You can go back in the morning. Where will I stay? I can get you a room in my hotel. <laughs> I didn't even bring a toothbrush. I just bought three million toothbrushes for the United States Army. I think we could spare one. Very glad to be staying at your hotel. You are? Yes. Oh, gee, this is beautiful. It looks like something in the movies. Stuffed, huh? <laughs> gee, you must have an awful lot of pull to get something like this. Well, I think you'll be comfortable here for the night. Will I? And how'd you ever dig this up? Well, one of my military aides got it. Probably requisitioned it from his wife. Oh, this never belonged to any wife. Well, uh, sleep well, Laura. Good night. Oh, don't go yet. Please stay a little bit longer. Oh, please. Well, if you... Oh, I really haven't had a chance to talk to you. Laura! Oh, you've got to listen to me. Laura! Oh, well, all right, don't listen to me. You listen to me. Uh, Laura... Laura, you've got to understand, I was appointed to this job by the President of the United States. It's a great honor. Aha! Uh -huh. What do you mean, aha? Uh -huh? So that's it. You're all blown up with your own importance, just like a ham actor. You, you've done what you set out to do. Now you want to stick around Washington and bask in your glory. That wasn't a very nice thing to say. And it's not true. All right. All right, then let me ask you this. If you do stay in Washington, will you give international projects government contracts? If I feel the government needs international's output, I'll give them all the business they can handle. Don't you dare. What? As a United States citizen, I protest. Well, now you got me thoroughly confused. If you let those dopey directors do business with Washington, they'll close down the government like they did Apex Clock. Like they did Apex Clock? Now, don't be ridiculous. Apex Clock is one of our own companies. Sit down, McKeever. Sit down. I've got something to tell you, and if this doesn't do it, nothing will. Once upon a time, there was a little lady stockholder. Decision. 
I'm going back to the company. You're going to resign from the government? Shh. Well, what's the matter? Well, you just can't keep anything secret in this town. Well, but it's wonderful. Why should it be a secret? It's the smartest thing you've ever done. Well, it wouldn't do to have it come out in the papers until after I've spoken to the president. Oh. And for another thing, I don't want Blessington and the boys to know I'm coming back until I'm right on the scene, oh. ready to move in. Okay. Now, we'll slip out of the hotel quietly first thing in the morning. Okay. Shh. Okay. Thanks for coming to Washington. Oh, you're welcome. Good night, McKeever. But, but I, I, I'm not running this time. No, I am. Thanks, anyway. Good night, Laura. Get some sleep. <laughs> Who can sleep? Shh. Well, you know, plane reservations are very hard to get. But not a word until we're out of the hotel. You know how busy. Will it take you to clean out your office? How do you get out of here? Why, there's a door over there. And now, the 8 o'clock news roundup. Bill Parker reporting. And a very, very good evening to you, ladies and gentlemen. And now let's have a look at the top story of the day. This afternoon, in the nation's capital, I think my one of the government's key shot. figures, <laughs> Edward L. McKeever, handed in his resignation. Members of both parties were stunned by the suddenness of McKeever's decision to return to private industry. And now, here are the first films of McKeever as he left his Washington hotel this morning. Mr. McKeever, do you have anything to add to Drew Pearson's report of your resignation? Well, I haven't exactly resigned yet. I'm on my way to the president to do that now, and I don't think I should say anything beforehand. But you are resigning. Now, well, what are your plans? Well, I think I can serve my country best by going back to international projects. That's all, boys. Business lady, Mr. Uh, McKeever. Just a business associate. <laughs> story that will fascinate you. Late yesterday afternoon, Mr. McKeever arrived at LaGuardia Airport from Washington. And still accompanying him was, that's right, the mystery woman who left Washington with him after having, by a strange coincidence, spent the night at the same hotel in Washington. She even went to the Pentagon with him. And here we see a picture of Mr. McKeever leaving the Pentagon after closing up his office. There she is, ladies. Oh, this whole story has such a wonderfully exciting, romantic flavor. And now, ladies, let me tell you about Double Tint, the new hair dye that can turn you into a mystery woman. Real smart. Very smart, sending her to Washington. How did I know she was going to bring him back? You chaps seen the papers? No, Harry, we haven't seen the papers. For the past 24 hours, we've been living in a tree. Mother landed a record-breaking bluefin tuna off Florida. It weighed over... Harry, I would suggest you look at the front page. Then turn to the want ads. McKeever's here. He's in the building. He's losing no time. Yes, I expect he'll want to be chairman of the board again. And president of the company. Yes, and I shall be vice president. We'll all be moved back. Well, what about me? Oh, you'll fire you. Well, that cheers me up a little. Well, look, we chaps aren't going to take this lying down. After all, we've got the votes, haven't we? Well, you do. Jack. 
For once in his life, your brother-in-law may have something. Uh, how do you mean? What are we scared of? McKeever was boss for so long, we're shaking in our boots. But now we're in the driver's seat. He's got no stock. That's true. Well, how will we handle this? Well, we don't pull any punches. We get right... I'll handle it. All right. You do the talking. Be as diplomatic as you want. Just don't weaken. Very well, boys. Now, this isn't going to be pleasant. Yeah? Mr. McKeever's here. Send him right in, please. Now, let me do the talking. Well, boys, McKeever's back. Would you care to make a small wager on that? Please, Harry, I'm doing the talking. Oh, it's been so exciting, Laura. All those pictures of you in the paper and on television. And those terrible headlines, weren't they wonderful? The phone hasn't stopped ringing. Life magazine called up and look. And several television producers called, and a lot of theatrical agents. Agents called me? Sure, lots of them. Wow. Tell me, Laura, is it true that Mr. McKeever's coming back to the company? Oh, sure. Hello. Hello, Mr. McKeever. Frozen out of my own company. What? Frozen out of my own company. What happened? What happened? I'm out and they're in. That's what happened. Jack Blessington telling me I was all washed up and that Snell throwing in his two cents. Clifford Snell. Should have fired him 15 years ago when I caught him taking home paper clips. I don't understand what happened. It's very simple to understand. I spent half my life building this company and now I'm out. Did you bring up Apex Clock? Huh. The way Snell has juggled the books, the Apex Clock deal looks like a stroke of financial genius. Oh, brother, did I underestimate those guys. They're more crooked than even you thought they were. It's my fault. Nonsense. Oh, yes, it is. I made you come back from Washington. You were right. I had to come back to find out for myself. Isn't there anything you can do? Like what? So am I. Look, I'm not going to roll over and play dead for these guys. I'll get them. Sure you will. They're not so smart. I I'm sorry, Laura. I know how much you'll love this job. Oh, don't be silly. Here, unplug the coffee cup. down the whole department. Oh, Amelia. Why did they do this? Well, you see, Amelia, when the director sent me to Washington to see Mr. McKeever... Wait a minute. Wait, wait. Repeat what you just said. Well, you see, Amelia... No, no, no. To me, to me. Well, you see, Amelia, when the director sent me to Washington to see Mr. McKeever... That's it! That's what? We can get them out for committing a criminal act. They did send you to Washington. Yes. They bought you clothes, gave you an airplane ticket. That's true. Sent you to pressure me into giving them government contracts. That's right. Will you testify to that in court? Of course. Then we got them. There happens to be a law against that, Laura. A federal law. I know the Man Act. <laughs> Miss Partridge, it seems to me that you're being very evasive. Doesn't seem that way to me. Let's try again. 
Mr. Snell's testimony, corroborated by his colleagues, states that the decision to go to Washington was entirely your own, that the company would not dream of sending an unregistered lobbyist to Washington. He says that the directors of the corporation did not even know that you had gone to Washington until they read about it in the newspapers. Oh, brother. <laughs> Do you mean to tell the court that men of my client's prestige and integrity would deliberately falsify the facts? I think they deliberately falsify their own mother. <laughs> Miss Partridge, is it not true that you went to Washington because you were anxious to see Mr. McKeever again? Hey, Miss Partridge, I am saying that you and Mr. McKeever were lovers. Now, wait a minute! Mr. McKeever. Your Honor, I object to this line of questioning. I do, too. Your Honor, I'm simply attempting to establish Miss Partridge's motive in taking this <laughs> so-called lobbying trip. Objection overruled. Thank you, Your Honor. I ruled against you. Well, you're making a big mistake. Miss Partridge, it's perfectly obvious why you went to Washington. Your mad passion grew so strong, you no longer could abide the separation from your lover. And so wildly, impatiently, you flew into his arms. You're crazy. Oh, it took me hours to get in to see him. The reason I went to Washington was because they sent me to get government orders. Your Honor... I would like to present to the court at this time a sworn statement by the night watchman in the Washington Hotel. Here is one by the elevator operator. Here is one by the head waiter of a Washington restaurant, one by the busboy. And here is the last one. A statement on a bill from a well-known lingerie shop for one sheer black nightgown. $225. Oh, that's not true. That was just a regular requisition GI nightgown at Mr. McKeever's military pay. Miss Partridge, I'm going to ask you one more question, and I want you to remember you're under oath. Are you in love with Mr. McKeever? Your Honor? Yes? How much can I get for perjury? Miss Partridge, I think you had better answer the question. Are you in love with Edward L. McKeever? Yes, I am. I didn't hear you. Yes! I rest my case. No, he quits. I'd like to see him get up here and let me ask him a few sneaky questions. You may be excused, Miss Partridge. There's nothing you guys wouldn't stoop to. Please, ladies and gentlemen, we must have quiet. If it please the court, we don't want to rush things, Your Honor, but my client's annual stockholders meeting takes place at 2 o'clock this afternoon. Not only is it necessary for them to be there, but they feel that it would be most gratifying to the stockholders of their corporation if they could bring back a decision in this matter and announce it at the meeting. Well, if uh, Mr. McKeever has no objection... You gentlemen have a word for our viewers. Yes, I have. I would like to say that justice has been done. I thought we won. Judge threw the entire case out of court. We have been vindicated completely. I doubt if Edward L. McKeever will ever trouble us again. I've got to get away from those newspaper men. Probably be a million of them waiting for me at my house. Well, let's go to my place. Nobody will bother us there. Take us to my place, will you please? Very good, miss. Be alone there and have a chance to think. Did you mean it? Mean what? You know what you said in court. Well, of course I meant it. I was under oath of perjury. Then let's get married. Well, it's just because I. I mean, that doesn't mean you have to marry me. Of course it does. Why? Because I want to. It doesn't sound like it. Well, Laura, I, I'm trying to tell you I love you. 
Oh, McKeever, I know how you feel. It hurts me. I just told you. Oh, no, not about me. About the company. What company? I don't have a company. That's what I mean. How can you know how you feel when you're so upset like this? Laura, I know how I feel. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, this is it. Oh, boy, it's a mess, isn't it? Gee, I'm sorry. Excuse me. There's much I can do about it. Being a businesswoman and a housekeeper isn't easy. I'll be right back. Hello, Maribel. Oh, boy. Well, why don't you sit down? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, just a minute. <laughs> Mail. Mr. Jenkins forwards it to me from the office. I haven't had a chance to catch up with it since this court business. Oh. Oh. I take it down, but it's still wet. How about some lunch? I've got tuna fish and... Oh, nothing for me, thanks. I, I'm very tired. Yeah, I know. Uh, I guess in business it doesn't matter how much time a man has given to a company. What? My gold key to the International Projects Building. Wow. Open any door in the place. A symbol that I am always welcome to return. To Ed from the boys. Laura, let's go away. Marry me. I can. Why not? You're out of work. Makes no difference. I've got plenty of money. Oh, what's money got to do with it? Oh, not that I'm against it. But a man needs more than money. A man needs a job to go to, a job he loves. And he needs a home to come home to, a happy home. But if he has no job to go to, how can he come home to a happy home if he's been sitting home all day to begin with? I don't understand you. Look, you'd hate yourself. If you don't think very much of yourself, then you begin to think I don't think very much of you. Then you begin to hate me. Oh, no. Suppose I start a new company. Oh, that's no good. International Projects is like your baby. If you let those take it away from you, you would hate yourself. And you'd be absolutely right. But what can I do? Well, how should I know? Think of something. Like what? Like the stockholders are having a meeting this afternoon. Go down there and fight. That's the most idiotic suggestion I ever heard. See, already you're impossible to live with. I'm sorry. I know you must be very tired. All right, Laura. Just forget it. Well, maybe you can forget it, but I can't. It's not just a business to me. All these people that write me letters, they're my friends. All these stockholders, they trust me. You've seen these letters. Yes, yes. Well, look, now here's a letter from Mrs. Weaver. Here. Dear Miss Partridge, how are you? I am fine. My arthritis is feeling much better ever since I changed doctors. I have been taking some very expensive pills, but I think good health is more important. I am enclosing my proxy uh, for the next stockholders meeting. I don't usually bother sending these proxies, Miss Partridge, but since you and I have been corresponding, I feel much closer to the company. <laughs> 30 shares. Well, they're all like that. Here's another one from Mrs. Howard in Biloxi. It's the same thing. Dear Miss Partridge, I am glad to tell you that my husband is feeling much better. I am enclosing my proxy with your name on it. I know you will cast my vote for the best man there. 75 shares, 40 shares. This is very interesting. Yes, it's interesting. I kept telling them what a great man you were and how you wouldn't let them down. Hello. Hello, Amelia. Something's happened you should know about. What? Mr. Snell fired Mark. When? Just a few minutes ago. Just a minute. Snell just fired Mark Jenkins. That makes four of us out of work, and you still sit there. Hello, Amelia. Well, what did he fire him for? Well, it was about your mail. Mark... My mail? Why would they fight about my mail? Wait a minute. Let me have that. Miss Shotgrave and McKeever, is Jenkins with you? Yes, he is. Put him on. Jenkins, this is McKeever. Give it to me fast. What happened? Well, I tried to get Laura's mail out of the mailroom, and Snell caught me. <laughs> There's an awful lot of mail, and he had it moved.
to his private office. <coughs> I got it. Meet me at the office in 20 minutes. What are we going to do? Get something to throw this mail into these letters. Hey, what? A, a Anything. How do I know? Just make it snappy. Is this all right? Is this yeah, that's happy? fine. Hold it. Well, what are we going to do? Never mind. Do what I tell you and be quick about it. No, McKeever, that's what I call love talk. Mark, Mark, where is the stuff? In Mr. Snell's office. Where's Snell? It's down in the auditorium. At the making, it's supposed to be due to start any minute. Mr. McKeever, you can't go in there. What? Mr. Snell's not in. It's the best time to be here. Ha! The key, I left it at your place. Oh, no, I've got it. I wouldn't leave it lying around. It's gold. <laughs> Wow! Hey, you Laurel. see, I've been piling up like this for oh. days. I should have told you about this sooner. You mean these are all mine? Sure. When I saw what happened in that courtroom, I, I, I... 50 I, shares. Here's one for 100 shares. 40 shares. Hey, Mrs. Johnson has twins. 200. <laughs> Laura, get down to that stockholders meeting as quick as you can. Well, I do. Stall, we get all these open, talk, sing, dance, anything, but don't let the meeting end until we get there. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman! Mr. Chairman! Come to order. <laughs> the annual meeting of the stockholders is hereby declared in session. The next order of business is the reading of the minutes of the last meeting. Mr. Chairman, I move we dispense with the reading of the minutes. I second. All in favor? Proxies, vote aye. Any opposed? We will dispense with the reading of the minutes. And now the report of your treasurer, Mr. Clifford Snell. <clears throat> Thank you, Jack. Well, folks, I guess I'm the fellow you either like or dislike, depending upon the size of the dividend checks. Mm? <laughs> I will admit that of late, the dividends have not been as high as we would like. However, as you all know, that is the fault of Mr. Edward L. McKeever. Now that Mr. McKeever is no longer connected with international projects, nor is he in Washington, I feel that we will find that things are looking up. Now, let's see exactly what we did do last year. You've all been given a copy of our annual report. Suppose we all sort of thumb through it together. Now, I'm... Uh, just a moment, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Mr. McKeever. Gentlemen, we feel we've already taken up entirely too much of your time, so we would like to try to get this through as fast as possible so you can all go on home. It's really a very simple report. On page 11, you will find that we have assets of $9,001,842,960.74. The inventory runs from page 32 through page 58. Then we have gross profits, etc., 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 etc. I, I really believe that's all there is to it. Now this report is completed, I'd like to hear a motion regarding its adoption and so approval. Moved. Seconded. Proxies vote aye. Now the Treasurer's report has been approved, it's time for re-election of directors. Mr. Chairman, I move. Second. I move the entire slate be returned to office by acclamation. Second. Second. You heard the motion. Any opposed? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I've got a question. We haven't asked for questions. I have a question anyway. There's a motion on the floor. I've got a question about the motion. What's the question? What's the motion? <laughs> Miss Partridge, you're out of order. Oh, Miss Partridge, are you Miss Partridge? Oh, Miss Worthington, for her interest. How's your daughter? Oh, she's Order, order, order. Will you all please sit down? Oh. Mr. Snell will be furious. Oh, you tell Mr. Snell. 25. 25. Don't just, just stand there trembling. Or hold those envelopes as fast as you can. 60. 60. 100. 100. Order, order, let's have order. There's a motion on the floor. Have a question? No. Not a question. Yeah. The chairman rules that Miss Partridge's question is out of order. <coughs> we will now vote on the motion to re-elect the board of directors. <coughs> All in favor? One million six hundred thousand proxies vote aye. Any opposed? I'm opposed. I'm opposed. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, we try to run these meetings democratically, but I, I scarcely believe there are enough votes among these nice people here to override our total of 1,600,000. Count the votes. We have a right to have the votes counted. Very well. If you will all please fill in your ballots and pass them up here, your secretary and I will count them.
45. 200. 200. This is Mr. Jenkins. 50. 50. 50. Uh, 50. Send a service card to Mr. 40. Snell's office. 40. 50. Right away. 50, you said. Right. You hide me right away. What'd you say, Amelia? 75. 75. 100. 100. Oh, sure has a lot of friends. And some strange ones. Five shares. Five shares. Mr. Bill Moran, 50 shares opposed. Mrs. Arnold Weatherby, 100 shares opposed. Mr. John Deary, 200 shares opposed. Mrs. Margaret Donna, 50 shares opposed. Miss Laura Partridge, 10 shares opposed. <laughs> Mrs. Thomas Smith, 15 shares opposed, and that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been keeping the totals as we've gone along. The total of those opposed comes to exactly 14,165 shares, which is certainly not enough to win out over our total of 1,600,000. I want the figures checked. I, I, I demand a recount. Oh, Miss Partridge, you <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, the vote on the motion is as follows. 1,600,000 shares vote aye, and 3,650,000 proxies vote no! All votes for the little stockholders, all giving Miss Partridge the right to vote uh, stop! Miss Partridge, you are in control of the entire company! <laughs> I'd like to make a motion. Oh. You heard Miss Partridge. She wants to make a motion. What's the motion? The motion is... You're all fired! Second the motion, and I want to make a motion. What's the motion? This! This! And when the next stockholders' meeting rolled around... This substantial increase in the dividend is due to the expansion of international projects' operations. Respectfully submitted, Laura Partridge McKeever, Vice President, Secretary, and Treasurer. And so our Cinderella and her Prince Charming went home to their palatial estate on Long Island. But they didn't go in a coach drawn by six white horses. They went in the little stockholder's wedding gift to the bride, a solid gold Cadillac. Well, what else can you give a girl who has everything? <laughs>